How do you run a business in this pressure cooker environment? Israeli fizzy drink maker SodaStream operated a factory in the West Bank employing hundreds of Palestinians until last month. It had to close, at least in part, due to what some say was political pressure. We have SodaStream CEO Daniel Birnbaum in from Israel joining us now. We're happy to have you here. That, that former West Bank plant, Ma'ale Adumim, mm -hmm. why did you close it? Was it pressure politically? No, not at all. We grew so much. We grew to five uh, factories in Israel, and it was inefficient. We decided to build one state-of-the-art factory, which is now up and running. We have 1,100 people working there uh, between Tel Aviv and Beersheba, and we migrated all of the other factories into that one location. So can that's you, why we Can you bring shifted. the 200 Palestinian workers that were there to work well, there or no way? We're doing, we're, unfortunately, the Israeli government has not been uh, very helpful at facilitating that. We tried to get them work permits. Right now, we're down to about 40 Palestinians who are working with us, and I'm not too hopeful for the continuation of that. Uh, people, people try and make SodaStream this statement versus just a business. Does it annoy you that you're looked at not necessarily as just a business, but as a bridge between Palestinians and Israelis? That's right. We got ourselves into some political debate because of the location of our factories and um, all around that. And that's not what we're about. We're about helping the world uh, drink healthier, okay? Helping the world have less plastic trash. You'll hire anybody, right? Yes, yes. And right Who now we're trying it? to hire Syrian refugees. Uh, we've collaborated with the mayor of the town right next to our factory, a town called Rahat. It's a Bedouin, Bedouin town, and we've reached out to the mayor there. And it's a model of cooperation between um, uh, local business and local um, government. Mm -hmm. It's a model, by the way, that could also work in the United States, because it's not only the federal government's responsibility to deal with migration and refugees. If local business and local government will find jobs and housing, It'll become real easy for governments to do that. And that's what we're trying to do in Israel with the Syrian refugees who Israel is already taking care of from a medical standpoint. Almost 2,000 anyway. Syrians have been, have been treated in Israel without any fanfare. Israel is getting no credit for the humanitarian efforts that they're doing to help Syria. Isn't that amazing? The Israelis are reaching out to Syrians. Syria is an enemy of Israel. Exactly, exactly. Maybe somebody in Syria would look at that and say, look, the Israelis are, are a better example here, but doubtful at this point. I don't know. Let's talk about the business and what all your employees are making. These are the two latest ones that you have. This right. is home carbonation. You can do flavored waters. You can do soda outright. I love it. It has actually saved me money. I'm not making a, a commercial statement right. here, but we drank so much Pellegrino and Perrier. It was costing so much money to constantly buy. And, and the, the Schlepp factor, who wants to carry those bottles? But you, when you sat down here and I told you that, you said, but think of how many plastic bottles you're not contributing to the environment right. simply by doing this. That's right. That's what SodaStream is about. We believe we're um, an important part of the future of the beverage industry. You see, the, the, especially in the U.S., beverage has been declining. Soda has been declining for about 15 years. And there's a reason for that, because the consumer doesn't want sugary soft drinks. The consumer wants healthier beverages. For example, sparkling water. Mm -hmm. There's nothing healthier than simple sparkling water, and that's what we do. We transform tap water into sparkling water in five seconds. And it's very economical. Well, you just said five seconds. Keurig, the competitor, came out with Keurig cold. And somebody timed it and said it took nearly an entire minute to make a soda. I, I fail to see how they can be a competitor. They just had a dismal third quarter number that came out. Do you look at them as competitors? Look, well, Coca-Cola invested a lot of money, more than $2 billion in Keurig, to come and compete with SodaStream. That's what they said. Um, and we welcome the competition. Actually, competition is good for a new category like home carbonation. How is you guys doing five seconds and them taking an entire well, I can tell you this. It's not the only dis distinction between the two solutions. They can throw all the engineers in the world at this. And they can throw all the money in the world at this. But I can tell you one thing. This is what SodaStream does. And they will not win this war. Oh, God, you just scared me. They won't. Com a company with heart. With heart. Well, uh, and a mission, a social mission. We're watching. And a business mission. We're watching. We're watching. Thank you so much. Daniel Birnbaum, who is the CEO of SodaStream.